Hello, my name is Jack Hazen. I'm a 21-year-old electronic music DJ. And what I'm gonna do today is basically show you how I like to express myself as an artist. I really like to take part, take tracks apart and sort of manipulate them to my own, you know, artistic ability. And uh, yeah, I uh, wanna give a shout out to Masked Faces for having me on here. Really appreciate what Brandon here is doing for me. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy this little artist profile. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. As far as music taste goes in Rockland County here, it's usually a lot of people that are mainly into just rap, I find. A lot of, you know, pop music and I myself, I'm very behind on pop music. I usually don't really find out about popular hits until about like a year after it's released. So usually it's just like if I'm ever hanging out with friends, there's always people that are playing like a Bruno Mars or a Drake track of some sort. And you know, they, that's, a, that's what they like, but I, I usually like to keep it underground and you know, find hits that people might not be familiar with. Um, you know, left field sort of, you know, sort of songs that no one even knew existed. And SoundCloud is definitely the place to find, to find all that, for me at least. Um, so basically that's how I like to express myself. I don't like to stay to any specific genre per se. It's always usually, you know, somewhere in the electronic music range. But I like to incorporate a lot of rap elements, a little bit of rock, and just, you know, hit people with highs and lows that they never would have really expected to come their way. So I'll basically go from like a straight banger, whether it's hip hop or dubstep, into like Alan Watts, who's my favorite philosopher. Um, you know, I recently came across this mashup. I don't remember who made it, but you know, it was like this uplifting, very euphoric instrumental song in the background while Alan Watts sort of motivates you through his uh, through his words of wisdom. So it's just like, it really depends on my audience. But if I was if I was playing like someplace that was very intimate, maybe it was just friends and it wasn't really people to drink or, you know, turn up and have a good time, then I'll, I'll like to sort of like, like play with their feelings a little bit, change the emotion up. And just, it, just because it's something that like sticks in people's minds. And that's what I really want when it comes to being an artist. I don't care as much about getting my name out there and getting fame. I mean, if, if that comes my way, you know, that's great if I get to play more venues with the bigger crowd, that's awesome. But as of right now, when I do shows, I like to, I, or just like any sort of uh, local event, I like to put on a show that really sticks in people's minds where it's just like not just having a good time, but making them feel both happy, um, happy, excited, you know, just really just like changing it up constantly. And I, I would rather put on a good show for, fit, for like, you know, 30, 40 people and something that they'll never forget than playing for two, 300 people at let's say like a high school prom of some sort where I'm just playing top 40 billboard, uh, billboard hits. And I wouldn't say that's really selling out, you know, cause I would never play just that straight out. Um, you know, but I, I basically would rather, you know, put on a set that's unforgettable for people rather than you know, playing for a bigger crowd where it's not exactly taking control fully of the decks. I would say what really drives me are the electronic DJs today that don't just play song after song. That's actually most EDM DJs today. I have a good ear for music, so if I'm ever at a show, I'll listen to what these guys are doing. And I'd say 95% of them typically will just play one song, you know, maybe do a little bit of EQing, as in basically like messing with highs, mids, and lows on each deck that they're using and that's like their way of blending one song into the next but usually it's just they'll fade out one song while fading the other one in and that's okay i guess because the audience isn't really there to you know to hear 
like you know artistic ability it's more so just to hear their favorite songs and what really drives them to be like you know to be excited and really want to jump around and headbang or whatever the case may be um you know so i i don't want to do just that i really want to just like uh manipulate songs and you know like take certain sections and just change them up you know you know it's like it wouldn't be the same track as what it would like it wouldn't be um the same the same original song if you heard it on soundcloud so i would say when it comes to my biggest influences i would say guys like bass nectar and zed's dead uh bass nectar especially i mean he's such a he's such an enlightened dude and he, he doesn't use just, you know, these CDJs um, that everyone else is using. He's using Ableton Live, and he really just, he, he blows me away whenever I see him. He's so talented in what he does. All of his music, it never really sounds the same. It's always very creative, very well produced, and it's, it's, t it's top quality stuff. So I would say just the way that he that he takes, he kind of takes control of people's minds. Um, you know, I remember I saw him in Atlantic City for one of his curated events, and I didn't even know what to think of music after that. It's it's very hard to explain, but you know, if, if you ever look up any of his live concerts, you know, you might uh, get the gist of what I really mean when I say that. The only content that I've released so far are just a few mixes on SoundCloud. They're just hour-long mixes. It's, uh, I call them Wubble Up a Dub Dub. It's a Rick and Morty reference for those that don't know. And it's basically kind of in the name, the, at least the dub aspect of it, because that's what I play. I play dubstep, dubstep music, one of the many sub-genres of EDM. I'm really just practicing for the next show that I will get booked at so that, so that it's always better than the last. The only thing, one thing that does come to mind, I will be playing a little party at Dob in Dobbs Ferry in uh, just in Westchester County across the across the river from where we're at here. Um, and that's basically like I'm gonna bring all my friends out, as, you know, some people from the school I attend, Mercy College, also in Dobbs Ferry, and me and my boy Austin Hennessy, his name's H Alpha, that's his artist uh, artist profile on SoundCloud, you can look it up, he does a lot of techno and tech house, really top quality stuff. And um, so we're basically gonna put on a show, it's basically, you could say it's, you know, a, like a banger of some sort, but it's not like your typical shit show where everyone is just there to get fucked up, drink, and, uh, I can curse, right? <laughs> Where everyone's there to drink, get fucked up, meet new people, and just get, you know, totally plastered. Um, this is going to have a little bit more focus on me and Austin. We want to bring good production to uh, to the audience. So we're going to probably bring out, like, some strobe lights, fluorescent lights, fog machines, and, you know, specific set times. And we just want to put on, like, our main focus is really just to put on really good shows. If you want to find the Wubble Lubba Dub Dub mixes, you can search my SoundCloud. It's just my first and last name, Jack Hayes, and there should be a little uh, little trippy robotic skull as the profile picture. Um, you can find the Wubble Lubba Dub Dub mixes there. And if you have any other, um, if, if, if you have any ideas of what you'd like to hear from me, maybe I could delete the mixes, or maybe I will subscribe to SoundCloud Go, or I could use another platform like Mixcloud and upload different content onto there. Certain mashups, I really like blending, especially old school rap with uh, with old school dubstep. It's uh, I really like getting that unique sound. Of it. So. Um, yeah, any recommendations, you know, look look me up. Again, it's Jack Hazen, one word, no caps. Um, just one word. I would say, I've, d I've taken my fair share of LSD at this point, and I just really like, I like playing a lot of trippy music. It sounds, it's, especially if I'm under the influence, it's just like when I listen to that music, it really speaks to me in the trippiest way possible. And if I, uh, you know, when I saw Bass Nectar at Camp Bisco Festival this past summer, you know, that was my 10th time seeing him. And 
I remember I took about two tabs at that event and I ended up losing my friends. I was completely by myself. I just went up to some random girl and asked if I could join her group of friends. I, uh, I would say that they, that like, you know, when I see certain artists under the influence, it's just, it, it speaks to me in a way where it's just like, the way that they play the songs or the way that they, uh, the way that they perform on stage, the way that they like act. Um, you know, I, I kind of want to like, you know, take that and sort of just like, you know, put my own spin on it, literally, <laughs> on the decks. Um, that's basically it. I just, I really like to put on, I like to play a lot of like weird songs, stuff that very underground hits. That, uh, some, some of them are mainstream, some of them aren't, but most of the time if I just play it for someone random that isn't uh, too familiar with electronic music, they usually just like, some, sometimes they're a little indifferent to what I play and sometimes they're just like, whoa man, like I didn't even know that like that this kind of music existed in the first place, you know? So I like playing music that no one has heard before. <laughs>